Have you ever wondered what it would be like to see the spiritual world with your own eyes? There are many people who have reported seeing strange figures appearing right in front of them. Many have even claimed to have seen these creatures inside their own rooms, and these creatures can take various forms and sizes. Some have reported seeing a black dog, others have seen bizarre animals with multiple arms, wings, legs, claws, and teeth. But if I were to tell you that these creatures actually exist and are part of the spiritual world, you may not be aware that the spiritual world is more real than we imagine. In today's video, I will show you what it would be like to open your eyes and begin to see the spiritual world around you. I guarantee that you will be surprised by the revelation I will share. So stay with me until the end of the video, okay? Before we begin, I ask that you subscribe to my channel. Do you see the red subscribe button below the video? Click on it and then a bell icon will appear. It's very important that you click on that bell and select the all option to receive all notifications for my upcoming videos, okay? Now let's get started. We Christians believe that there is a physical world that is visible and tangible, and there is also the spiritual world where we cannot see or touch, and that is where spiritual beings reside. If you don't already know, there is an enormous number of spiritual beings, just as there is a great number of beings in the physical world. Scientists claim that there are nearly 9 million species of living beings in the world. Now, can you imagine such a quantity in the spiritual world? Many think that there are only a few angels and demons, but the truth is that we are talking about a kingdom, a realm of authorities and powers. Therefore, we can affirm that the spiritual realm comprises millions of spirits who govern and possess supernatural powers, and everything that happens in the spiritual realm has effects here on Earth. Likewise, what we do here impacts the spiritual realm. I know that many people imagine the spiritual world as something frightening and terrifying. They envision strange creatures walking and running everywhere. But did you know that the spiritual world is right in front of you? I know that this truth may be unsettling, but it is a reality that we cannot ignore. The Bible itself teaches us about this. Look at what is written in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The Bible reveals to us that there are categories of power and authority in the spiritual realm. That means both angels and demons have titles of princes and powers, which are assigned according to their functions. Some have greater powers than others, while others have lesser powers. The first evil authority we encounter in the Bible is revealed in the New Testament and is called Beelzebub, the Prince of Demons. The Bible recounts that when Jesus was performing miracles and the people around him did not believe that he could do it on his own, they began to assert that Jesus was using the powers of the demon Beelzebub, which is another name given to Satan. However, this name can also be found in the Bible as Baalzebub, the god of Akron. Akron is a city located in the southwest of Canaan, and theologians claim that Baalzebub would be a demon in control of that city, possessing healing powers. This is revealed in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 1, when messengers tried to communicate with this demon to be healed of their injuries. Some theologians believe that Baalzebub means Lord of the Flies or Lord of the Dung. The appearance of this demon then would be like that of a fly. It may seem too simple to think that a demon would adopt the identity of a fly to appear in the physical world. But this idea does not seem impossible either, as a fly would hardly frighten anyone. And if there's one thing the enemy wants, it is to approach us without our knowledge. Another prince of demons that we can find in the Bible is mentioned in the book of Daniel. Daniel was a highly consecrated man who prayed fervently to God, and the Lord would send responses through angels. On one occasion, the angel bringing God's answer was hindered by the demon with the title of the Prince of Persia. Let's see what is written. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, because I was detained there with the king of Persia. In this passage from the Bible, it becomes very clear that angels and demons are constantly engaged in battles with each other, and so are we. When we pray, we come face to face with the enemy trying to hinder God's answers from reaching us. That is why it is so important for us to persevere in prayer. There is another category of demons that carry the title of kings. 
The Bible warns us about the reign of darkness, about the spiritual governments and authorities of the evil one. They are controlling not only what happens in the spiritual realm, but also in the physical world. These demonic creatures always use people who are far from God, who give room for sin and cause others to drift away from God as well. But the good news is that if we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are on the side of the victorious. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that nothing in this world, neither powers nor demonic authorities, can separate us from the love of God. I know that you may be frightened by these descriptions of demons, but I want to tell you that just as there is a reign of evil, there is also a reign of angels. One of these angels is called Seraphim. Seraphim is an angel of God and is mentioned in the Bible several times. Look at what is written in Isaiah chapter 6, in verse 2. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. Another type of angel described in the Bible is the cherubim. Generally, these angels fulfill the role of guarding and protecting, and according to the Bible, cherubim are known to be guardian angels. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, it says that God placed cherubim angels in the Garden of Eden with a flaming sword to guard the Tree of Life. But what would their appearance be like? The Bible reveals to us in Ezekiel chapter 10 that they have four faces. The first face is their own face, the second face is that of a man, the third face is that of a lion, and the fourth face is that of an eagle, an angel with flaming swords that move with four faces. It seems like quite a vision. In reality, the work of the cherubim is to protect everything that God commands, and their appearance may be somewhat intimidating. But I am sure that if it was God who sent them, there is no reason to be afraid. There is another category in the hierarchy of angels, and that is the archangel. One of the archangels mentioned in the Bible is Michael. He is considered the warrior archangel. When the prince of Persia tried to prevent the angel from delivering the message to Daniel, it was Michael who came to the aid of the messenger angel and put an end to the enemy's party. And you may wonder if we are talking about a spiritual world that we cannot see. Are the people who claim to have seen these creatures in front of them lying? Not necessarily, brothers and sisters. Of course, many make things up. Many tell stories they haven't seen, but in the Bible, many were able to see what happens in the spiritual realm. And if it happened in the past, there is nothing to prevent it from happening today. For example, the prophet Elisha and one of his servants were among the privileged ones in the Bible who could see with their own eyes. The Bible tells us that when the Syrian army was sent to capture Elisha, his servants were afraid because they saw a great physical army approaching. But Elisha was calm because unlike the others, he could see the spiritual realm. He had already seen with his own eyes that he was being protected by a spiritual army. So he prayed for God to reveal this to one of his servants. Look at what is written in 2 Kings chapter 6. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. The Syrian army was approaching with horses and chariots in the physical world. But the army in the spiritual realm around Elisha consisted of horses and chariots of fire. So, with this verse, we can affirm that the spiritual realm may have the presence of many things similar to those in our physical world. If the Bible speaks of horses and chariots, but covered in fire, surely the spiritual world can be very similar to the world we can see, but with elements of power and supernatural manifestations. And are you prepared to witness these things? Brothers and sisters, we can influence the spiritual realm through our prayers. That's why the Bible instructs us to pray at all times. The Bible says that God is spirit and he is seated on the throne above all. But it also says that God is with those who have a broken and repentant heart. He can be in all places, and even if you don't see him, believe that the Lord is there to protect you and give you answers. If your heart is connected to the Lord, the number of demons that try to attack you will have to flee. So do not be discouraged, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Hallelujah! You don't need to see the demons taking the form of various objects and animals to believe that they are real, and that is why God allows most people not to see the spiritual realm. What God expects from us is to look to Jesus and focus on obeying His Word. 
I know that many people become so focused on trying to unravel the spiritual realm that they forget to preach the gospel of salvation and start believing in things that are not in the Bible. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we must be very careful because the Bible says that even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light to deceive people. So always be cautious about what you see, what you hear, and always rely on the Word of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is good for us to study what the Word of God reveals to us about the things around us. In reality, we don't need to be afraid or worried because God Himself commands the angels to guard us in all our ways, as it is written in Psalm 91. Amen. If you enjoyed this video, I ask you to share it with your friends and family and subscribe to my channel. May God bless you and see you in the next video.